Lisa, this idea of a melt-up is in part perpetuated by the fact that there's still money on the sidelines, that people haven't really fully embraced this rally, and as it rushes in, you could see new highs. Is that something that you guys are seeing from your clients? Uh, yeah, so our clients uh, in the private wealth business have uh, been fundamentally conservative for most of uh, the first four months of the year. Cash balances are well above average. Uh, and so, you know, the, the thesis around a potential market melt up as, you know, investors embrace kind of, you know, FOMO or fear of missing out and come in uh, from the sidelines, I do think is, is uh, you know, somewhat bullish for the markets in the very, very near term. Is that why? I mean, the second point you have there is that volumes have been thin, which, which is something we've seen. Is that why we just haven't seen a lot of conviction? Uh, well, I don't know if it's so much if it's conviction. I just don't think that we've seen a lot of retail and, and private individual investor uh, participation. Uh, and so a lot of what we've seen is kind of, you know, just institutional money being repositioned uh, in this market. We have not really seen flows come in uh, through, certainly through equity mutual funds. Jim, do you buy this idea that the market has more room to climb as people continue to get in because they have FOMO? <laughs> well, if people continue to get in, then just the momentum of money, that philosophy alone would likely uh, lend credence to the view. But we think what's going to drive the market higher will be fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Earnings here in the U.S. remain better than expected strong. Our economy remains better than expected strong. In other words, we're seeing no signs of an earning recession, no signs of a U.S. economic recession. We think that uh, the low interest rate environment continues to net benefit consumer-driven economies like our own, especially given full employment and moderately rising wages and a very confident U.S. consumer. We like the fact that the fundamentals to us suggest that there's reason for cautious optimism, not just about being able to selectively pursue more gains, but also to reasonably defend the gains we've achieved. Lisa, you sound a little bit more like uh, uh, Larry Fink than Mike Wilson. I wonder if you think there's going to be a, <laughs> a strategic pivot at Morgan Stanley regarding at least uh, earnings for the next couple of quarters. Uh, no. So let me be uh, uh, absolutely clear. Uh, while I value uh, Larry Fink's view uh, quite a lot, and I think he's got a unique purview, mm -hmm. as do we here at Morgan Stanley, on uh, investor flows. Um, uh, Mike Wilson and I are in violent agreement uh, that this is a market uh, that is going to have to digest the realities of a potential earnings recession. Uh, and it is a market that at this point, from a valuation perspective, is running on fumes. Um, you know, in a very short period of time, uh, we've seen PE uh, multiples re-expand uh, to almost, uh, you know, 17 and a half times forward earnings. Uh, and, you know, we see margin pressures emerging. Uh, and we think it's going to be very, very hard for companies uh, to, to surprise. Um, right. One of the but things but that... Just to follow up on that point, though, why aren't we... I mean, I know we're not nowhere near the end of the earnings quarter, but... We're just not hearing that tone out of the conference calls. Why not? Uh, yeah, because I, I mean, fundamentally, I believe that, uh, you know, the Fed has given everyone a gift. Uh, there's a lot of optimism uh, that we're going to get a trade deal. There's a lot of optimism uh, that non-U.S. or international markets are going to reaccelerate. Uh, and so I think right now, um, you know, it, uh, managements are maintaining uh, that level of uh, optimism. But I think that the reality is going to hit. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that investors are going to have to reevaluate uh, what is truly possible and truly achievable in terms of earnings numbers. Um, one of the things that happened is that earnings expectations were crushed uh, in the first quarter. And that's why we're getting these earnings beats. On a year-over-year -year basis, the earnings are not at all impressive. Uh, and so I think we need to be very careful about buying into this rhetoric that we have, you know, 80 percent of companies beating expectations. Those are expectations that were slashed from a view that companies would grow their earnings uh, at 18 percent last summer, then that they would grow their earnings at 12 percent uh, in January. 
to a view that they were actually going to uh, see declines this quarter. And that's fundamentally what we're seeing. We're seeing beats yeah. off of an unbelievably reset bar. Jim, you want to take the other side? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take at least half of the other side. I do think that sooner uh -huh. or later, we're going to have to pay the piper in terms of uh, slowing rates of growth, both domestically and globally. That said, when you look at the U.S. and you look at all of the headlines that have been profoundly negative with relation to earnings recessions and a U.S. recession, when you look at all the concerns relating to Brexit, when you look at all the concerns relating to, relating to China's slowing global growth, these are three markets, especially the U.K. and China, that are faring significantly better than expected this year. And we suspect, so long as the fundamentals maintain their strength, that there is reasonable room to still run.